Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Jillian Barry, and today we have an epic guest in store for you guys, all the way from Australia. We have Olivia Budgen. She has an amazing YouTube channel and she's incredible. She actually had a number of health problems years ago. She was bedridden in a toxic relationship, felt like she had no self worth and all kinds of health problems. And she turned it around with raw food. So we're going to find out what happened the good, the bad, the ugly, what is going on. She is awesome. You guys ask for her all the time on my channel. So let's hear her story. Let's get right into it. Hey, Olivia, thanks for coming on. How's it going? What an introduction, Jillian. <laughs> um, yeah, it's pretty good. And thank you so much for having me on. It's really an honor to be a part of your beautiful community that you've built here on your channel. So thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you on. And you deserve that introduction. And I want to ask you guys, the viewers, let me know in the comments down below if you like the introductions or if you just want us to get right into it, let me know and make sure you guys subscribe before we start. But you have an amazing story and you're such a beautiful person. And I would just love to rewind a bit first to start out so we can get to know you more. And here's sort of what you were struggling with for your health problems, how your health was, what you were eating or and I know you were drinking and stuff too. And then you turned to raw foods and how it turned around or what happened. Sure. Yeah. So my journey started about 10 years ago um, is when I found raw foods. But a few years, a good few years prior to that, I lived, yeah, a pretty <laughs> terrible um, unhealthy lifestyle. So I pretty much lived off of processed foods. Like I literally don't recall eating any fresh fruits or vegetables oh. for like a good four or five years at that time. Like it was pretty awful. Um, and I was uh, binge drinking like a few times a week, doing recreational drugs. And I was also in a toxic, a really toxic relationship as well. So yeah, I wasn't um, at a good point in my life at that time. And yeah, so that was kind of the cycle that I was in. And eventually that toxic relationship ended, which was good. But I kind of put like my, my identity into that relationship. I mm -hmm. have been kind of like, have you heard of like a people pleaser? Yes, I've been yeah, like that. I've, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that's basically been me my entire life. I was always putting everyone else's happiness before mine. And so I put my identity kind of like into that relationship and trying to do everything to make that person happy. So when that relationship ended, I just felt so lost. I'm not sure if you ever kind of felt that feeling before um, when something has ended. But yeah, I just felt really lost and down and like I lost who I truly was in this life. And yeah, so that happened. And so I started to suffer with a bit of depression through that. And then I went to Thailand. I traveled overseas with some girlfriends for a front trip. And I got a really bad case of food poisoning over there, like a really, really bad case. And now that I look back, I think that I'm pretty sure I picked up a really bad, you know, bacteria or bug or something or a virus. And so when I got back from that trip, that's when things I just started to notice some things really going downhill with my body. So I came back and a few weeks later, like I was going out drinking with my girlfriends as usual, but I'd have like, and I could drink quite a lot back then, but I went out and I'd have like half a glass of wine, for example, and I'd just start throwing up, like severely wow. throwing up and get like this really extreme headache. I was like, oh, that's strange. And so like I went home and then tried again in a few days and the same thing happened. And <laughs> I was pretty annoyed because going out was such a big part of my life at that time. So I kept sort of like pushing it and trying to go out. But the same thing kept happening. So I was like, okay, my body obviously just, I'm not able to do this anymore at this time. And now that I look back, it was obviously my liver that was just totally overloaded and was like, I just can't handle alcohol anymore. So I'd gone through all that and I wasn't able to go out anymore. So I kind of like became really introverted. You know, I was still quite lost and depressed in my life. And so I was like working during the week. And then on the weekends, I was kind of like just staying in and watching movies and binging on like really bad foods, I guess, kind of like to suppress and numb my emotions and everything that mm -hmm. I was going through. And smoking a lot of marijuana at that point as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was the cycle I was in. And then for a while of doing that, I just started to notice this like extreme fatigue and brain fog sort of start to come over me. And these were symptoms that I've never experienced in my life before. And if you've never been chronically ill before and you've just sort of 
had like colds and flus and that sort of thing, you kind of just think, oh, it'll just be like a cold and flu and it'll eventually go away. Yeah. Um, and those symptoms kind of came and went, came and went, but they were slowly getting worse when they did come. And eventually one day I just couldn't get out of bed and it was just that extreme and it didn't go away this time. <laughs> wow. So there was kind of a bit of a wake-up call to the realisation that something more severe was going on. And also by that point, I was suffering from severe constipation. So I'd suffered constipation most of my life without really realising it because the doctors kind of tell you as well, they're like, oh, you know, if you go like a few times a week, I think they say, you know, you're fine. Crazy, yeah. It's to- total BS. So I always thought that I was normal with that. But obviously through my unhealthy lifestyle, it got worse. And at that point I was pooping once every two weeks. Wow. Oh my gosh. I would be so moody. <laughs> like back in the day that used so to be me, moody. I was so moody when I wouldn't used to have bowel movements back in the day before I was raw. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, absolutely. And that gut brain connection. So it definitely made my depression so, so much worse and my mood as well, for sure. And this didn't happen just for a little while, like that, those bowel movement things, like that happened for years. Like it was, it was really not good. So yeah, I was in this pretty terrible time of my life. Didn't know what was going on. That's when my parents started taking me from doctor to doctor, specialist to specialist for about a year or so. And no one could give me any answers. A gastro shock, gastroenterologist diagnosed me with IBS. And she just said, oh, in your particular case, it's something you're going to have forever. And she gave me a laxative, this pretty extreme laxative, and just said, you're going to have to take this regularly for the rest of your life. So that wasn't fun. Um, no. And the laxative as well didn't uh, really work that well. So, like, I'd take it and it wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything for days, so everything would build up and then I'd, like, explode at the end of the week or something. So it was like this cycle of constipation and diarrhea and, yeah, it was pretty terrible. So I wasn't getting any other answers, particularly for my brain fog and fatigue and then eventually my mood was just so bad and the doctors were um, suggested to my parents that I go on antidepressants just to like help me get through the days basically and that was when everything changed like I'm not sure exactly why I thought this because you know I had no knowledge of health and wellness at the time and I did just previously listen to anything that the doctors said in the past But when my parents came to me and suggested that I go on antidepressants, something just lit up inside of me and I was like, no, I don't want to have to rely on pills to, you know, for my mood, for my happiness. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, this light just ignited inside of me and I thought I I can't seem to rely on anyone else to help me anymore, particularly in the medical field. So I was just, you know, fatigued in bed all day and I just started Googling and I was like, how to get better by yourself. I can't remember exactly what I typed in, but it was something similar to that. Yeah, And all this information just started coming up about natural healing and foods and diet. And I was like, what? Like the foods that I eat, like that I'm eating affects the way that I'm feeling and my health. Like it was just such a new concept to me. And how crazy does it seem that like we didn't have that knowledge all that time ago? Like it just seems (laughs) insane. I know. So yeah, just dived into this research and I'm that type of person, a bit of an extremist in that way like when I find out something and it makes sense to me and also being someone with chronic illness you just so desperately want to feel better that you'll do anything and so overnight I cut out uh, all processed foods just like that wow and I kind of first went to like that paleo sort of keto Mm. type of diet because that was all the rage back then it kind of still is in a way I guess but obviously cutting out processed foods so quickly like it made such a big difference quite fast you know so in a matter of weeks I was slowly feeling my energy come back my digestion was improving a little bit and I kept doing it and eventually I got to a point where you know I could get out of bed again which was great but obviously I'd lost my job through that time as well I forgot to mention which made everything worse but that's kind of obvious so I was doing that and then my symptoms were improving a bit but they sort of plateaued to the point where I didn't feel them getting feel any improvement for a while and I was still researching and researching and I started going to like my local farmer's markets and things to get fresh food and just um, meeting like-minded people who had maybe been through some similar things and have their own health issues. And that's when someone recommended to me a raw vegan diet. Wow. And I was like, 
what? Like not cooking your food? Like that's crazy. But at the same time, it just sounded sounded so crazy, but also so interesting. You know, I was yeah. so curious to like find out more. And I started researching it. And of course, all these amazing stories of people healing a variety of issues came up. So overnight, again, I just went raw vegan <laughs> overnight. Um, and I kind of might make it sound easy, but there were definitely some bumps in the road. I'm not sure if you like started doing raw veganism perfectly, but I definitely didn't. I basically uh, like just went to my local health food store and I just like looked at anything that said raw vegan mm-hmm. <laughs> and thought that that was like totally fine to eat in abundance of. So I was like, yeah. oh, look at all this raw chocolate and like raw vegan food you know, protein bars and kale chips and all these like dehydrated gourmet foods, which look like so much fun, um, you know, like raw vegan peep spaces. And so I just started loading up on that. And of course I got like some fresh fruits and vegetables, but my diet was basically like raw vegan gourmet dehydrated yeah. foods. <laughs> so I remember I'd have like some fruit in the morning and maybe like a tiny salad for lunch with like this, you know, big nut and avocado dressing and then like for dinner I'd have like dates like raw chocolate and like kale chips or something like yeah. that funny enough though like I did feel another shift um in my health and my symptoms even though oh. I wasn't eating the most optimal raw vegan diet so things improved a little bit again but definitely not with my digestion obviously looking back now I realized that was all the dehydrated foods I was eating yeah. which wasn't good and so I was a bit confused. I was like, I'm feeling some improvement with this, some things and some not with other things. And as I was doing more research, I found Dr. Doug Graham's book. Thank gosh. Yeah, 80-10. <laughs> and so I, mm-hmm. Yeah, the 80 10, 10 book. Uh, I know you've had him on your show as well and he's amazing. Yeah. And so I learned all about the importance of making sure that your diet is compromised of uh, mostly, well, all fresh fruits and vegetables. And most of your diet coming from uh, carbohydrates from fruits. And then Mm -hmm. um, the importance of leafy greens, which I was not eating basically, yeah, any leafy greens at all, just like maybe a handful at lunch just with a salad or something like that. Yeah. And that's when everything like really took a leap and change is when I um, cultivated that type of diet. Um, My digestion, oh oh my goodness, just the fruit, like, I think because fruits are just so easily assimilated and digested, yeah. like my bloating improved so much, the flatulence, and I just started having more regular bowel movements, which was just just a lifesaver for me, basically. And my mood, my mood started to greatly improve, of course. Amazing. And I started getting more and more energy back. And yeah, so that was kind of, I think, the biggest shift that I'd ever experienced in my health before was to the fresh fruits and vegetables, raw vegan diet. And um, yeah, I'm not sure how much more you want me to go. There's obviously. Um... <laughs> yeah, well, no, I do. We can talk about a couple of things. Yeah. First, do you feel like the depression like mostly went away after that and there wouldn't be a need for people telling you like maybe you should go on antidepressants? Was it like a big Absolutely. difference in your mental well-being? It was, it, was a, it was a huge difference. And it, like, I just remember as well, my parents were just like, whoa, like they just said, They'd let that I'd like come back to life. And that's the way I felt as well. Like I remember feeling like a huge improvement when I cut out the processed food. And perhaps you can relate to this as well. But when you go to the raw foods diet, you feel like just this whole new sense of life come into your body. And I truly do believe that we are all energy and energy is neither created nor destroyed. So what we do eat is just, you know, transformed into our being. And when you eat a diet compromised of raw living foods, fresh from Mother Nature, you're just like consuming that sunlight energy. And yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to explain unless you have experienced it. But yeah, it changed everything and literally yeah. brought the life back into me. That was like um, me. I experienced it exactly like you. It's, it's just the electric mm. and the foods. I felt like myself yes. for the first time ever. I never ever knew that level of like it's hard to explain like you said like Mm, the best that's why I say like I felt like myself for the first time ever like so just easily connected to like my higher self and in alignment yes the foods just put me in alignment and it's like I'd never felt like that before and I think I was always searching for that through alcohol Mm. and I was never big into drugs but 
alcohol I was. I drank every day for almost 10 years. And like you said, processed food. Wow. And when I gave up processed food and even dairy and things like that, it did a huge, like the brain fog, gluten, especially like it uh, mm. lifted brain fog that I didn't even know I had. It was crazy. So it was like yeah, that for absolutely. you too, right? Like your brain fog went away. Yes. Yeah, so it, it made such a huge impact to me and brought me back to life in so many ways and so many levels. And like with you, I felt connected to like my soul, my spirit for the first time. So obviously this has been a huge spiritual journey for me as well, which I'm sure you can relate to is kind of like the bonus, like you don't expect that to happen, yeah. um, but it changes you in so many ways. Unfortunately, I still do, um, just to be upfront and honest with you yeah. and the viewers, like I do still struggle with um, chronic illness symptoms. And, you know, I was a bit kind of, I can't think of the word, like, maybe embarrassed to come onto your show in the sense that you, um, you know, everyone seems to have such incredible stories of like 100% reversing these illnesses and diseases or health No, but issues. we like honesty. I want, we want honesty <laughs> on this channel. We want real experiences, even if it's things, you know, I've even had on ex-vegans, like I am not dogmatic. Oh, and yeah, that's like, right. <laughs> but yeah, even I like real experiences. That's That adds so much value to people because maybe there's other people watching who are going through things and thinking, oh, I see all these perfect people. Like, how come I'm not experiencing that? So when you yeah. first went raw, like everything was pretty amazing or was it like improved a lot, but you still had some problems or did everything like yeah. clear up and then like some problems no. came back or no? No, <laughs> no. So everything improved greatly, but my two main symptoms that I still struggle with are yes, quite severe brain fog and mm -hmm. the chronic fatigue as well. Wow. My digestion is, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty good. It's like leaps and bounds from where it was like I, I go every day which is incredible two to three times a day so I have issues with that every now and then but that's pretty good the biggest uh obviously the raw vegan diet made a huge impact on my digestion but enemas as well I know they can be quite controversial um mm. even in the raw vegan community and this might sound kind of extreme but they literally I feel like they saved my life because of that gut brain connection, the depression that I was experiencing with my constipation, the raw vegan diet did help with that. But enemas, they helped on a much uh, bigger and deeper level just to really clean out the accumulation that was impacting me. And I also used to get like series of colonics in the beginning as well, just to help move things along. I don't think colonics necessary to like continually do in like series you know for your whole life I think mm -hmm. they're kind of good for a, for a period of time but I do believe that enemas when used safely and appropriately can be very helpful to use regularly particularly if you're someone that has um, experienced chronic constipation yeah so that's something that really really helped me for sure yeah I did a lot of I think it was 2019 or 2020, 20, I forget which year, one of those, but I started doing enemas then. And I was so yeah. shocked at how much you release. And so I did a lot of enemas for a little while there and like a lot of parasites and like crazy things coming mm. out of me. I was like, yeah, absolutely. Oh, they really worked for me then. So do you still do enemas now or no? I do. Yes. Yeah. So I do do them regularly just to, I feel that they not as regularly as I used to, yeah. um, maybe about once a week or so. But I, they do help with my mental clarity and because I do still experience brain fog. It just, it just helps with that and just to help. Yeah, it's, it's funny even though, you know, I do eat such a, a clean, raw vegan diet. Uh, the stuff that still comes out of me does surprise me sometimes. Mm -hmm. So I do feel like they just, just help to sort of keep the bowel in yeah. tip-top shape. <laughs> yeah, and what do you typically, like what have you been eating in a day these days? How does your diet look? So these days, so I do uh, follow the medical medium lifestyle. I'm, I'm sure you've probably yeah. uh, heard of that. So his protocols I found a few years ago um, after I hadn't experienced any positive shifts in my health for, uh, for a while. Yeah. And when I found his protocols, they were the first things that actually helped me kind of get to that next level, which was... Uh, yeah, really cool, really interesting. I know he can be quite controversial as well. People have their different opinions about him. But really what I care about is, is personal experience and what works, <laughs> basically. Mm. Um, and that this is something that's working for me. And he also promotes a very 
gentle and compassionate way of detoxification. And that was not something that I was used to. And I guess that's something that I wanted to talk about as well. And something that I do believe perhaps uh, halted my healing journey and actually made things worse for me. And I think a lot of raw vegans can probably relate to this with this lifestyle and trying to heal a chronic illness is that you can sometimes like jump to the extremes of things. You kind of, you know, I've heard people say that people get like addicted to detoxing or whatever. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm not sure if that's the case, but like particularly people with chronic illness, you know, we're just so, I guess, we have this strong to de- desire to feel, you know, to heal our symptoms. We kind of uh, mm-hmm. dive down the rabbit hole of detoxification and we want to do whatever it takes. And so there was a period in my life uh, before that I found a medical medium lifestyle where I got into fasting. A friend of mine introduced me to water fasting. And um, again, I researched it and there are so many incredible healing stories with fasting. I know you've had Mm -hmm. a lot of people in your channel talk about it. And I'm in no way like diminishing the, the impact of fasting. I think it is like a beautiful, divine, natural process that can definitely support the healing process. But my journey was interesting with fasting. So I dived into it, of course, because I was so excited that perhaps it would be able to help me. Mm -hmm. And I actually traveled to a place in Bali. I did a retreat there under professional guidance. And I ended up doing 11 or 12 days of water fasting. Wow. Which might not seem like a lot to many people. It's a Um, lot. I, I know a lot of people have done more. I think I'm a very small person as well. So I don't have as much, I guess, to live off. That's, I've never done well. one whole day in water. So that's a long time. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So I did that 11 days and I'll, I'll kind of jump forward and back here a little bit. I did that experience. And then I think a couple of years later, I did another 10 days of water fasting under, under professional supervision as well. I really just felt, I know a lot of people do water fasting and fasting at home, but I think because I had a chronic illness and um, I do, you know, recommend people who have more severe illness symptoms to perhaps get professional supervision. because Yeah, for can sure. I agree. Get, yeah, absolutely. Things can go wrong. But yeah, my experiences with the water fasting were not good, but water fasting is held in such high regard in the community that I sort of kept forcing myself to do it because I was like, Maybe I just need to do it more. I need to dig deeper. Like Mm. I need to get more stuff out. And I think that's when things can get a bit dangerous with toxification, like pushing your body too hard. Yeah. People Um, need to listen to their body, you know, because it's, you know, you see other people, oh, this is working, that's working. And then, yeah. Exactly. It's not. And I did not listen to my body. So during those experiences, I was under the supervision and I was with a, a small, you know, intimate group of people. And I remember always thinking like, like, obviously, fasting isn't meant to be easy, you know. Mm-hmm. But, and so I was, I was with this group of people and we'd all sort of, you know, go, go through our journey and struggle. But I'd always see these people after a few days or a week or so kind of coming out and, like, they'd be like, oh, it was such a struggle but now. And they were still fasting, but they were like, oh, I'm really getting this new sense of energy and health and wellness and they could feel themselves just, like, positive things were happening. And I was always the person, like, I was just, like, couldn't get out of bed like just so extremely fatigued like my symptoms were going through the roof like just I felt like my brain was being fried during fasting like that wow that's as much as I can explain it and like other people were like feeling their brain was coming alive and just feeling all these incredible things and I always thought and you know people that were guiding me were like oh you know it'll come like you just got to go for longer you just got to do it deeper these sorts of things Mm -hmm. and I remember at one point I even like started coughing up blood and I was like okay this like can't be good like I really think I should stop now yeah Yeah. just things like that and when I did eventually end the fast like I remember uh they gave us some fresh juice and like I would just drink this juice and I I felt my body just be like oh thank god like we're getting some you know energy and fruit and food back into me but yes a few weeks after those fasts I didn't feel good. I felt worse than when I started the fast. And um, yeah, it was kind of a lonely process because I felt like I kind of had no one to talk to about it because everyone, that, well, people that I talked to that had done fasting, they were like, oh no, it really helped me. And then like professionals in the field, they kind of didn't want to hear about 
stories that didn't work with fasting. They were like, oh, you must have done it wrong. Or, yeah. You know, I, I know. I feel like through. some people think like this is the way and it's going to work for everyone. This is this the way, only way. That's yeah, it. Absolutely. And they just like can some people can sometimes maybe be a little bit disrespectful if it's not working for people and thinking like, no, like you're doing it wrong or but it's just so important to listen exactly. to your body, whether it's fasting or a diet, you know, you have to listen to your body. So, wow. Well, it's interesting. I'm really glad do. you're sharing that it didn't work for you. You know, it's, it's, it's real and it's good to he- not, well, I'm, it's not like good. It didn't work for you, but I mean, <laughs> it's nice to just be real and raw like that, you know? Absolutely. And I feel like, um, it is kind of a passion for, of mine to be more of a voice in that regard to help other people who might be in the same boat that are trying fasting. It's not working for them. And they're kind of confused about why they, why it's not working for them. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are dangers with fasting there absolutely are and I don't think that they're spoken about enough yeah I agree spoken more seriously about enough so yeah it's something that I really do want to talk about more but I kind of yeah I I didn't have anyone to talk to about it before I was confused I I eventually stopped it which was good because I was like I just can't handle any more fasting I also to mention I got into dry fasting for a while which wow I absolutely wouldn't recommend no. um, to anyone, particularly people suffering from chronic illness symptoms. I did that about four times over a few weeks. And so, yeah, I just sort of left fasting. I put it to the side. I was very confused for a while, very lost. I was at a point where I had enough energy to kind of get through my day to day. And then eventually that's when I found the medical medium protocols and information. And that was the first time that I'd heard something, so heard someone speak about fasting and about the dangers of fasting. And he explained it in such a way that made me understand exactly why it didn't work, particularly for my situation. So I think it's important to, for people to be aware that, for example, our liver is like the main detoxification organ and it's what holds onto a lot of excess toxins so that they're not like floating around in our body and causing havoc on our system Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it releases those toxins when it seems you know when it feels like it's safe when our bowels and kidneys have the ability to be able to detox those toxins but what happens is when we fast particularly water fasting especially dry fasting is it basically forces and pushes the liver into releasing those toxins all at once Mm -hmm. so that's what happens and if the person doesn't have a strong enough structure or a, um, the ability to detoxify all of those toxins um, fast enough, because the bowels and the kidneys can still only, they only have the ability to, tox- to detoxify a certain amount of toxins in a certain amount of time. So if your liver has released all these toxins and the bowels and kidneys can't release them all in a certain amount of time, mm-hmm. they're floating around in your system and wreaking havoc on your brain, your organs, your central nervous system, your adrenals. And that's when things can really start to go wrong. And that's what I felt like definitely happened with me, like this mm. dump of toxins. And I just felt so fatigued and dizzy. And it, I know this sounds weird, but it's like I could feel those toxins just floating around in wow. my body. Wow. So yeah, that's what, that's what can happen. And that's, that can be what um, is potentially dangerous for people. And, and that can be why people feel worse during and after fasting. So I think it's really important for people to listen to their body. It can be, you know, okay for people, you know, maybe just start by experimenting, like do a day or two of juice fasting, do a day of water fasting and just see how your body responds to it. I think it's important to have like a strong uh, central nervous system and a strong uh, adrenal glands before you do a fast. So if you're someone that has like a generally sensitive constitution, you're very sensitive to things, you have weak adrenals, it can be more dangerous to to embark on like an extended water fast for sure. Yeah, I think with water fasting, people need to be careful and consult someone. You know, the people I think even do like consult, you don't have to always go to a place. I think you can do shorter ones, like consulting with them. But mm. I think it's important if you're going to do that to... I mean, do it supervised and do a lot of research. I've never done it, but it's interesting to hear your side of it too. And it's good for you to share that. And so the medical yeah, medium fine. protocol, like, I don't know exactly. I haven't followed him like exactly to a T and stuff. Like, so what types of, like, what does a day of eating look like for you right now? What are you eating in a day? Yeah, that was your question for me, wasn't it? I totally <laughs> or if you don't want to say, you don't have to. <laughs> no, of course. Yeah. So he obviously promotes a, a whole food 
fresh yeah. fruits and vegetables diet, which was what I was already doing anyway. And he also um, supportive of a raw vegan diet, which is wonderful. Uh, yeah, and he promotes particular fruits and vegetables, which are like really supportive for healing, which is what I've really started to bring into, bring into my diet, which seems to be helping. So obviously you might've heard about the celery juice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So every morning I start my morning with two cups of water blended with uh, ginger and half of a lemon squeezed into there. And that's really meant to support the liver and flushing out toxins after we've been asleep all night. And then about 30 minutes after that, I'll have my two cups of celery juice, just plain, fresh, organic celery juice. And then after that, I, it depends what's in season. At the moment, mangoes are in season. So I've just been making like a big green smoothie with bananas, mango, tons of spinach and kale, um, ginger and lemon and celery is my smoothie at the moment. And then for lunch, I like to kind of have something like sweet and a bit savory so I don't know about you but I love tomatoes like me too <laughs> me too oh my god I think they're like so underrated um in me this too. lifestyle and if you can get your hands on like fresh organic juicy red ripe tomatoes they're so delicious or like heirloom varieties so I'll have like a big bowl of um tomatoes for lunch and then like a bowl of cut up fruit like berries yeah. are in season at the moment so like wild blueberries pineapple peaches plums those sorts of things so I'll kind of make up like a fruit salad bowl and then have the bowl of tomatoes with that and then for dinner I'll either have like a two-part dinner where I'll have the medical medium spinach soup which Mm -hmm. is like one of my favorite and it's a super dense green soup so it's got Mm -hmm. like four to six cups of greens Mm -hmm. and then you blend that up with some tomato and celery and garlic and orange juice and then you spiral up some, spiralize up some cucumber noodles and like pour the soup over that. And then you like top it, I top it with some dolls and chopped up spring onions and those sorts of things. And then after that, I'll have like a big fruit meal um, mm-hmm. to kind of finish my day. So at the moment I've been having like uh, maybe like another mango, some dragon fruit, dates. I love, love dates. I'll cut up some dates in there, um, maybe some passion fruit. Yeah, and if I don't do that two-part dinner uh, situation, then I'll just make like a big, gigantic kind of salad and I'll just put in like tons of raw veggies and greens. Mm-hmm. And um, this is a fat, fat-free salad actually, so it's just fruits and veggies. So I actually put in like lots of bananas and dates and grapes and currants and inca berries and dried mulberries and um, just it's just like this huge sort of mixture with different colours and textures. and um. I know some people might be freaking out like, whoa, like that's a lot of uh, different things to have in one bowl. And I know like simplicity is a big thing in the raw vegan community. And I, I mostly like eating just like very simply with like just a yeah. few pure ingredients or like mono mealing. But this salad seems to work really well for me. And it's just right. really nice to have this big bowl of different textures and colors. So yeah, it's um, really delicious. And so um, I'm an advocate of a low fat raw vegan diet. Mm-hmm. Again, I think it's important to listen to your body and I think different people can have the ability to digest and absorb different amounts of fats. Particularly, you'll find people that do deal with chronic illness symptoms. You'll find that they typically can't eat a lot of fat because their liver and gallbladder is struggling and pancreas and those are the organs that do digest the fats. So people that do tend to have the ability to to digest more fats are people that are stronger and healthier. So I still eat a quite a low fat uh, raw vegan diet. So I'll have fats every now and then, but mostly I'll have overt free fat days. And I yeah. find that that works the best for me. And you eat clean, like this is pretty clean eating. So I'm surprised you still deal with the brain fog. <laughs> and have you thought like what it could be? And it must be kind of frustrating because you're taking such good care of yourself. So you expect not to be dealing with that. And have you ever like checked your blood work or taken supplements or thought like maybe of trying like not being vegan has that ever crossed your mind or no I know this is a lot of questions I tend to ask like 10 questions at once so just go (laughs) with whatever you want to answer and everything you said was just like bam bam like it all hit me because I all relate to everything you just said absolutely it's frustrating it's been a very up and down journey for me and it's been very hard like it's been beautiful being in the raw vegan community connecting with different people 
I guess one of the hardest parts is like comparing yourself to other people yeah (laughs) because there's so many incredible stories about people going more vegan and they're just healing these amazing you know health issues and so like you know back way back when I was like oh yeah I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna be fine everything's gonna be perfect really quickly for me but yeah that obviously uh, wasn't the case and so it has been extremely frustrating and I'll be honest it has been hard to kind of hold that hope and faith that I am going to heal yeah um, particularly when I'm putting all my effort and doing the best that I can with everything so yes I have obviously questioned myself and my lifestyle along the mm-hmm. way so back more towards the beginning of everything uh, when I had already gone more vegan though you know every now and then I'd be like oh maybe I do need to work with a holistic doctor again or someone under some guidance so I remember there was this one doctor I worked with and uh, I'm sure you and many other people can relate trying to work with people that aren't raw vegan they just think you're absolutely kind of nuts yeah Um, (laughs) I know I get it (laughs) yeah and so like the first thing people would always say to me is like oh you know you're sick or you're dealing with symptoms because you're raw vegan like you have to eat cooked food you have to do this so there were points I worked with people and they said that and I was like okay, maybe I should go back to eating some cooked foods or animal products. So there was the one time that I went back to eating cooked foods and animal products. And within a few days, uh, I, yeah, that's a lie. Within like the first day, I felt a shift, a negative shift in my health, in my being. It's very obvious, very noticeable, very fast. I pushed through it for about a week and a half working with this person. But the, the difference was so extreme that I was just like, no, I can't deal with this anymore. Like I need to get back to that yeah. more vegan, that living feeling again. Particularly my my digestion did not like it very, very fast. Yeah. And so that was the first time, which was a while ago. And then actually just about two and a half years ago, um, I decided to try and uh, incorporate some cooked foods again. But the same thing happened very fast, very quickly. I noticed that negative shift. And it was just very obvious that my body feels so much better eating a raw living foods diet. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've experienced the same, same thing eating cooked foods again. And just like a, the hydration level as well. Yeah. Like when you start to eat cooked food, like I was so thirsty. Like I'd have to drink all this water after the meal. Like um, people think I'm crazy when I say this. You can probably relate more. But like I don't drink really that much water eating yeah. a more vegan diet. So you live it, you're eating so much uh, raw fruits and vegetables, which has that activated type of water. Yeah. So I don't think I don't I don't have the desire, and I just want to uh, express as well. I didn't actually have the desire to eat cooked foods when I did go back to eating them. I just yeah, thought, we're trying because look, you're try. doing problems. I would too. Yeah, yeah. If you do I eat raw. Like for me, like so far, six years in, like I'm thriving on it. I have so much energy. I feel amazing, mental clarity. So I just feel so bad for you. And if I if it wasn't working, I would be honest about that, and I would be open to trying things too in order to make me feel like my best self. Because that's just exactly. what I'm here for. Yeah. Because when I'm my best self, I can offer more to the world and stuff. So I'm just like I'm so frustrated for you that you've had to deal with this. Did you check your blood work at all? Like the all the yes, panels? I, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I do. I've done blood work very regularly, probably once a year, just to make sure that everything's okay. Everything's always been fine. Wow. Um, I did used to suffer with like extreme, like I was very anemic. And that was, that was interesting actually because mm. doctors and naturopaths and everyone like they'd get me on um, iron supplements and all these different things, iron infusions. Nothing helped until I went raw vegan and my yeah. iron like shot through the roof. Crazy. Um, wow. So maybe that bioavailability of iron in the way of, I, I don't know, to be honest, but that was, that was really great. So yeah, my bloods are fine. So yeah, I do regularly check that. I also do supplement. Absolutely. I actually supplement with a lot of things. So I take uh, B12 every day. I take zinc as well. I take my omega-3 every day. And then I take some supplements that the medical medium specifically recommends, which is what do I take? L lysine. So you're doing good. Like this is like, wow. You're on top of it. All these <laughs> um, things are oh, important. 
That's right. And of a, a B complex as well. So I'm making sure I'm getting all the B vitamins in. So, um, yeah, I feel like I'm trying to do everything the best that I can. And I am uh, working, I've just started working with another, uh, with a medical medium practitioner at the moment, because I do feel like it's the protocol that is really helping me at the moment. And so I'm just trying to do it in a way that is tailored to my unique situation. And have you tried, and, have you, or sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I wasn't really going to say anything else. <laughs> have you done, have you tried like no smoothies or no like blended stuff, just like the food as it is like not even doing that and seeing if it made an impact or no, I'm just curious. Yeah. That's an interesting question. Well, I did do that before, like when I first, uh, when I was doing like the 80, 10, 10, um, yeah. that's when I and then you were still wasn't dealing doing with any, it. yeah. So I didn't do any juices or smoothies back then. And I do feel uh, like everything's not food. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, no, absolutely. And there's that that whole other side of it for sure. And after doing the raw vegan diet for a while, that's when I started delving into all of that. And I think you kind of like naturally get drawn to the emotional and spiritual side of health and healing mm -hmm. as well because like we were talking about, eating this way does sort of activate like an awakening experience for people. And um, just like shit and crap and trauma just kind of gets drawn to the surface. And yeah. um, it's, it's undeniable. Like you can't, when you're sort of eating this way, you, you can't really suppress those things. things you as can't much run as for like it. The heavier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or you from it, run. yeah. There are other, obviously other ways of running and hiding and suppressing and, and that's fine. But, um, and I think it's okay to like not run away, but, you know, when things do feel a bit overwhelming I think it's okay from time to time just to maybe take a step back and suppress things just mm -hmm. to deal with them for a little bit for a little while but you ultimately have to face things to kind of finally move through them it's true that's a big thing the last few years I've gone through separation losing everything all these things happen like well a few years ago wow. and in a way it's great being raw because you have so much energy and mental clarity and like a bit more of a positive attitude, at least for me, I'm not saying everyone would to deal with it. But then at the same time, like those painful moments, like you said, even with the toxic relationship and stuff like those painful moments, you can't just run away to with like alcohol or things or like, you know, exactly. processed foods or cheeses, like it's harder to run away to the raw foods with that. Exactly. And <laughs> there so, is that downside. Downside yeah. To, you said, to so lifestyle. yeah, sometimes it can make life harder. Like it's not a joke. Truly. Sometimes it can be really difficult because it's like, I'm not running away. Like there's no, like you, I don't know. But so you're toxic. You were talking, I'd love to rewind a little bit too, because you said you were in a toxic relationship. And I think a lot of people can relate to that. A lot of people have been in one at some point in their life, whether it's a romantic relationship or another relationship. And it can be very easily to tie your identity to that. And maybe that relationship feels comfortable because that's kind of the environment you had growing up and it's a similar feeling or I don't know, like whatever mm, somebody's exactly. going through. I know that's like a common thing. But for somebody that might be in that right now, like for you who you were in that, do you ever think back and miss that now? Or are you happy you're out of it and you don't miss it and you can give some light to people out there who might be going through that? Do you have any tips for somebody on how to get out of that relationship and like get some self-worth? Like feel the self-worth and feel like they're worthy to get out of that and go through those hard times to get to like the good side, you know? Yeah, great question. Do I miss it? No, <laughs> definitely, definitely not. But you hit the nail on the head when you said like, um, it's, uh, it can end up being comfortable for people, you know? I think these days so many people are brought up in a way where we kind of, you know, without seeing the way that our parents are and live, you know, we're not brought we're not brought up in a way with like where we're surrounded by like super positive, healthy relationships, mm -hmm. you know, whether that's in our family or, you know, in the media, in movies and TV shows and just around us, you know, it's kind of unhealthy relationships all around us in a way. Mm -hmm. And um, drama is all around us. It's kind of something that we unconsciously are comfortable with and start mm -hmm. to thrive on. And, um, yeah, we can get into these unhealthy relationships and they kind of, as you said, they feel natural and, and comfortable and we kind of see them as healthy even though they are completely not. And I think it is like a big, just a, 
a lack of self-love, you know, that we have for ourselves. And it's like this wall that we have up and we can't see that we are worthy of, of so much more. And I think a lot of people like I was are people pleasers Mm -hmm. and we kind of gain our self-worth from the way that other people see us or feel about us. And so we want to change people. We want to make sure that they love us. You know, the anxious attachment Mm -hmm. part of us comes out a lot. Um, I've been learning a lot um, recently about, I'm not sure if you uh, heard about the internal family system. No. So um, a big thing that I started to do in the past couple of years is I started working with a brain rewiring, a compassionate-based brain rewiring coach. I'm sure you've about brain rewiring. Yeah. Yeah, I've learned that we all have these parts within ourselves and they're kind of parts that are created from when we're born depending on what we go through in life. And we kind of actually all have the same parts within ourselves but certain parts are bigger than us depending on what we've grown through. So, for example, we have like the anxious attachment style within us. We have the people pleaser. We have the self-sabotage part. We have Mm -hmm. the critical part of us. And depending on situations that we go through, these things can come up. They're kind of like um, the voices in our head that sort of tell us different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so particular situations that I went through in my life, like the anxious part of me is a very big part of me. And I'm very scared of being like left alone. I'm very scared of people not liking me and like leaving me basically. And so when I was in that relationship, I was being treated so badly, but my self-worth was in how he felt about me. And so I just wanted to please him and make him happy. And I wanted him to love me and I didn't want him to leave me. Mm -hmm. And so I was blocking out all these terrible things that was happening and just wanting to make him happy, which, yeah, just sounds so crazy, doesn't it? But it's not crazy when you start to understand why we are the way that we are and these different parts within ourselves. And so I guess for me in that particular situation, it was more so I'm just trying to think of what eventually made me actually get out of it. Like I was just so exhausted and so emotionally and spiritually drained by the end Mm. of that relationship. And for me, what happened was I'd found out that he, um, I eventually found out that he had been cheating on me the entire time. Oh, wow. Through those years. And that was kind of just the tipping point for me. Like I just, it was like my heart just couldn't handle anymore. And I just yeah. almost physically just had to leave the relationship. Even though a part of me wanted to stay and wanted to make him love me and want to be with me. Yeah, I ended up just just having to having to leave the relationship and it definitely wasn't easy and yeah I'm not really sure I think that can be like the worst feeling in the world too when it's like the end of a relationship like that it can be not the worst but one of the worst feelings and I think it's good that you that's why I asked you it's good you say like no I don't miss it at all now because when someone's in that it can feel like this is the end of the world I'll never get over this this person we're supposed to be together or like you know so now you look back and you're like, how was I with that person? Right. Or like, you know. Yeah, exactly. But when you're in it, it's just like, it's a whole different world, isn't it? You just can't seem to see outside of that world. And I remember like my parents and my friends and everyone was like, you know, what are you doing in there? Like, um, and I know this can happen, you know, with like people with in a, abusive relationships, you know, everyone from the outside is looking in and they're like, you know, what are you doing? Like, get out. But yeah, we just have to realize that everyone is living in their own sort of little world and we're wired and everyone is wired in their own unique ways. Everyone has these internal parts of themselves, talking to themselves, telling them to do different things. So it's very important to be like very kind and gentle and compassionate towards other people because you don't know what's going in on the inside and what's going on in their world and the way that they're wired. And I think it's also very important for us to be gentle with ourselves and kind to ourselves I think it this might be the biggest one of the biggest lessons I've learned through my whole healing journey is that I've just learned to be so much more kinder and compassionate to myself particularly for example after I ended that relationship once you kind of get out of it you can kind of see things a bit more clearly and I was so 
angry and resentful towards myself because I was like, how could I put myself through that for so long? How could I allow myself to be treated that way for so long? It was also mm-hmm. me treating myself in that way. Mm-hmm. And I think I held on to that anger and resentment, resentment for a very long time. And I think only recently doing this, I've done a lot of energy and spiritual healing, working with different energy coaches recently. And through meditation and breath work and these sorts of things, I've been able to forgive myself. Good. Um, Amazing. And I think the ability to forgive others and to forgive ourselves is not easy. <laughs> and I think, you know, we do hold on to a lot of our body literally holds on to trauma and negative emotions and all these things. And that does contribute towards illness and disease and, and symptoms. So I think um, doing that inner work. And just learning to work through your trauma and let go of it and forgive yourself and just really be kind to yourself is a big part of healing for sure. Yeah, well said. I agree. I couldn't agree more. And I'd love to ask you some viewers questions. Oh, sure. Yeah, but just for a sec first, I want to ask, so your eyes changed color on, or not, I don't know if they changed color, but they did change. I'd love for you to tell us how they changed. My eyes have changed raw too, so I'd love to hear that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then well, I'll get yeah, the questions. Mine, mine didn't change color. They just got like super bright, like <laughs> um, crazy bright. I think it happened within like a year or so after eating raw vegan. I noticed like a big difference and everyone around me was commenting on it as well. And then particularly, although I know um, fasting wasn't good for my particular situation, what fasting did do was like, it took my eyes to the next level as well. So I definitely obviously did experience uh, levels of detoxification through fasting and juice fasting Mm -hmm. as well. And like the whites of my eyes just got super white and bright and clear and just the blue color of my eyes got very bright as well. So I think, you know, the eyes are the windows into our soul and body. And I think when they, when um, they do have the ability to change once you start eating a cleaner diet, because you're cleaning the shit and crap out of your body. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Mine changed color. When I was little, they were blue, my eyes. And then, yeah. so I grew up, like I just ate everything, you know, animal products, standard American mm-hmm. diet, but I mean, healthy stuff too, but I was eating everything and they were blue when I was little. And then they went green. I don't know what age they went green. I would, I would guess probably middle school. I forget exactly. And then mm-hmm. they were green through high school, my teenage years, twenties. And then when I went raw, now they're back to blue. And they yeah, get, they're, really they're getting more blue. It's interesting. And they're, but they're definitely more like full of life. And it's interesting. It's interesting. Because I know it, because I, I went through living the Dr. Morse lifestyle as well. And he's obviously into the iridology. Mm-hmm. And yeah, have you, you've probably known that he talks about how green eyes aren't, aren't a good sign. Is that correct? Yeah, he was saying something. He's been yeah. on. I'll try to link that video below because we talked about the oh, eyes yeah. and that too. But yeah, he talked about that. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's so amazing me. that your eyes went back to blue. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Tani Ra, do you know her? Her eyes really changed <gasps> oh. color. Oh, really? I know they're insanely crazy blue now. No, her eyes used to be brown. Oh, I'll, put they... a picture. I'll put yeah. a picture on the screen right now. She is the most transformative eye color change I've ever seen in the raw community. Are they, yes. are they blue now? They're very blue. Yeah, it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. And not saying there's anything wrong with brown eyes or green eyes or any other color eyes, but it's just, it's an interesting observation to me. I find it so fascinating, but okay. So we have a lot of great questions. Everybody loves you. Everybody's been asking for you to come on forever. And I just want to say to the viewers, I'm sorry if this video is late because I know we did post six months ago that Olivia was coming on and then something came up with our schedules. We had to reschedule a few times. So it's better late than never. We are here. And okay. So the first question, Krista says, what are your thoughts on juice fasting versus water fasting? Uh, Yeah, so I definitely think juice fasting is a more gentle approach as definitely a safer approach uh, because you're still continually providing your body with the glucose that it needs to like feed the brain and the cells. I definitely recommend incorporating fruit juices into the fast when you're doing it. I know some people like Mm. do just green, like leafy green vegetable juice fast. Um, I definitely don't advocate that. Yeah, I definitely think it's a more safe and gentle approach, but I still don't suggest doing like an extended juice fast if you've got like some serious chronic health conditions, if you feel like your adrenals are really weak, if you feel like you've got a super sensitive central nervous system, I would just like approach it 
more mindfully and just do like the one to two days and see how you go. But of course, there are so many amazing testimonials out there of people doing extended juice fasts and healing yeah. different conditions. So I think it's just tuning into your body and just being mindful and careful about how you approach it. Yeah. hundred percent. Okay. And somebody was asking if you had any detox symptoms or physical difficulties when you were first transitioning from cook to raw. Yes, I definitely experienced detox symptoms. It's kind of uh, easy to forget about those sometimes because you do feel such, well, for me personally, I felt such an incredible positive shift. But then at the same time, I experienced kind of smaller detox symptoms, like my skin got quite bad for a while, actually, because um, I always used to suffer with rosacea, like mm-hmm. the red the red face. Yeah. So when I first went raw vegan, that kind of got really bad and I was like kind of getting all these really bad breakouts over my chest and my face. And then, of course, like because detoxification symptoms can be up and down, so my fatigue and brain fog were kind of, they'd get a lot better and then they'd get really bad again and then they'd get a lot better again. So that was quite back and forth. So those were the main detox symptoms for me. I also just want to note that detoxification symptoms, it can be like a fine line, something you have to be careful of, like because sometimes when people go raw vegan or eat a cleaner diet and they experience, or they go on a fast particularly, and they experience certain symptoms, all of these symptoms can be put into the box of detox symptoms. Like when I was doing water fasting and I was experiencing all these horrible things, the people were like, oh, they're just detox symptoms. Like you just got to keep going. You just got to go deeper. I think it's important to note that detox symptoms, if it's a true detox symptoms, uh, it's not going to last that long. Like, yeah, I agree. Come, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Like it'll last maybe for a week, maybe a few weeks, maybe a couple months. If it's a true detox symptom, it will go after that. If it's something that you're experiencing that goes for longer than that, that's not a detox symptom. It's something deeper like an underlying issue that's going on that needs to be addressed so that's Mm -hmm. important to make clear Mm -hmm. good point well said I love all these things you're bringing up so important for the community and for anybody tuning in and okay so Sarah said I would love to hear Olivia's perspective on responding to responding constructively to unsolicited feedback on practicing raw raw veganism as a petite person it seems like intentional food choices by smaller framed folks are especially subject to criticism by those who endorse a maximally omnivorous intuitive eating approach. Thanks again. And that's it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That's such a big topic. Um, It is. Yeah. Because rural vegans, we get hassled so much for that. Like any rural vegan does. I get that too. But you know what? I was was smaller when I wasn't raw vegan. I can try put a picture on the screen. I don't know if I have one right now. There's I sometimes post them on Instagram, but I was skinnier when I wasn't raw, but I've also had two babies now. It could be that too, but... (laughs) Anyway. Well, that's like fully raw, fully raw Christina. Hey, like she was super tiny before mm-hmm. and then raw veganism helped her gain some healthy weight. But yeah, raw vegans get hassled in general for our extreme diet and way of eating. But particularly, yeah, smaller people, smaller framed people. <laughs> I've gotten so much grief over my time with that. A lot of nasty, you know, people can be really nasty about it too. So it's Again, like what I was talking about before, it's just so important to be kind and compassionate to people because you don't know where they're at on their healing journey. You don't know where, what they're going through. And usually people that are, have gone to a raw vegan diet is because they're suffering from something, because they're trying to do better. They're trying to heal their body, their mind, their spirit. Mm-hmm. So they're trying to do the best that they can. And so I think if you're one of those people and you're getting hassled, you know, it's just important to stand strong and, and stand strong in your values and beliefs and remind yourself of why you're doing it. Of course, like you got to make sure that you're trying to do the best that you can with the diet, you know, that you're eating properly, you're not detoxifying too hard, you're nourishing mm. yourself in a way that suits you and in a way that makes you feel your best. I think as long as, as you feel solid in what you're doing and, that, and you know that you're doing the best that you can, then it's easier to sort of just let the outside critics, you know, fall away a bit. But just know that, yeah, this lifestyle and this way of eating is it's very different to the norm. Like it's so, it's so so different. And and uh, people don't people don't like different, you know. So when they see you doing something different, it kind of challenges their values and challenges their beliefs. And so people that aren't as conscious you know they're gonna challenge you and they're gonna perhaps Mm -hmm. be 
critical and, and perhaps even nasty as well. So you just got to know that you're doing the best that you can. And yeah, that's, that's what I've, that's what's always sort of helped me. Mm-hmm. I love that. Okay. And Yulia said, please ask her what her morning and evening routine is right now. That's a great question. Oh yeah. My morning routine. Yeah. I still, uh, as I said, struggle with uh, quite chronic fatigue. So I'm not one of those people that gets up at like four or 5 a.m. and starts my day then. So I still sleep quite a bit. I get up usually about around the 8.30 mark. Yeah. I'll brush my teeth. I, I'm a very, I, I love to do a lot of self-care. I love to keep myself really like just clean and tidy. So like, and, and I love using like really beautiful, non-toxic skin um, and personal care products as well. So I really enjoy my routines because, and what I use in my body and my face, because I know that it's really nourishing me. So yeah, I do my oral hygiene and I'm big into skincare. So after doing my teeth, I'll give myself a face massage every single morning with this beautiful natural cleanser. And I'll take some time to do that. It also helps to like stimulate the lymphatic system um, and, and um, release any excess, excess mucus and all that sort of thing. And then if it is one of my enema days, that's when I'll do an enema. I don't, I'm not an advocate of coffee enemas. I think they're too stimulating to the adrenals and the central nervous system. They are, I yeah. always just do a, yeah, <laughs> but I always just do a uh, plain filtered warm water enema. So I'll do that. And then I will always, always, always lie out naked in the sun. So that is a big part of my self-care routine, which I do every day when it's Amazing. sunny. Have you ever tried nude sunbathing? No, I would love to though. That's amazing. That so, must feel so nice. It is incredible. And I think it's very important. Like it's kind of crazy when you think that most people for their entire lives never expose their private parts yeah. to the sun. And the sun is so antibacterial and, and life-giving. And um, it is, it kind of sounds extreme, but it is kind of life-changing when you start nude sunbathing, just feeling this energy come into you from that part of you. So I'll lie out in the sun naked for about 15 to 20 minutes every day. Just a quick note, if you haven't done nude sunbathing and you want to try starting it, don't start out with 15 to 20 minutes. Yeah. Start out with like 30 seconds to a minute exposing your parts because they can yeah. be quite sensitive. So I'll do that. And then I'll usually uh, take a shower after that. And that's when I'll have my lemon ginger water and then I'll have my celery juice. And yeah, I'll kind of see what feels good in the morning. Like I might do some stretching and yoga, maybe some meditating. I've been doing my brain rewiring exercises every morning. That's a big part of my routine now. I'll play with my dogs. Yeah, that's my morning routine. Nice. And how, I'm wondering, how have your, how's your skin or your hair, nails and teeth been over the years? Have they been okay? They've been fine? Yes. Yeah, so my all of that has improved massively since being on this raw vegan lifestyle. Okay. Um, my hair was, <laughs> I remember one night after this, this big party night that I had the next morning, I called my mom in tears because I was like outside and my hair was like coming out wow. in like batches. And I was like, what is going on? Uh, so that just reminded me of that. And um, my nails were super weak and brittle. My skin, I've been fortunate with my skin since I was little. What did happen though was the doctors put me on the pill at a very early age because I eventually through high school I did start to get acne and they were like, oh, we'll put you on the me pill. Me too. I went on the pill for that, that too. Out. Yeah, oh, yeah, too. yeah. And it yeah. worked. <laughs> it worked. Um, but obviously it was disastrous for other parts of my health. Yeah. A part of my story is, is that I didn't have a period for eight years and eventually got that back a couple of years ago, which is good. But yeah, my hair, my nails, and my skin have just been incredible since living this lifestyle. Yeah. And you know, the pill, I went on it for the same reason. When I was in grade eight or nine, the doctor was like, oh, we'll put you on the pill to get rid of your back acne. It's because nobody thinks like maybe it's all the food I'm eating that's causing that. It's like crazy. Wake up. So I went on it for that too. And it's funny because I've read so much on how the pill, because you don't ovulate when you're on the pill, right? So I've read so much mm, about how correct. it even changes the type of partner you're attracted to because you're not having oh, the same no cycle. Way. Yeah, there's so much research on it. They say it wow. makes people like, maybe not always. I don't know you guys, but I've read a lot of things on this. 
don't kill the messenger if this makes anybody upset, but <laughs> saying that it, it changes the partner you can be attracted to. And then, you know, some people might choose a different partner and then go off it, start a family and then maybe they're off the pill and they feel different about that person. I don't know. I don't take the pill anymore. Everybody's got to do what's right for them. And I mean, practice your protection, whatever. But <laughs> I wish I'd never taken it. I took it. For, oh, me too. And I think I was a bit different of a person on it. You know, I took it from like 13 till I had my first daughter at 30. And I took it all those years, <gasps> wow. like 10 years ago. And then I'm just like so much happier and better off of it. You know, I just feel different off of it and happier and better. And I'm glad I don't take it. It's I think it's weird to suppress your natural like cycle like that. But again, like if you believe in it works for you, great. And I'm all whatever, do your protection. But yeah. Yeah, it absolutely. Is, I and it's just it's not a salute to me. Like <laughs> it wasn't the solution for the back acne when I was in high school. Though at the time right. I was happy because it got rid of it and I was so insecure about it in high school. But really cool. it was the foods, you know, my skin cleared right up after I have great skin, raw. It's crazy. Yeah, your skin is glowing. And Thanks. I think that's a beautiful part of this lifestyle. You just feel, you start to feel so empowered. Like you get, you take back your health, you take back your life and you realize that you have the power to, you know, positively impact all areas of your life with this yeah. type of lifestyle. It's, it's very, it's really wonderful. Yeah, it is. Well, let me see. Okay, I know we have a few other questions. My question for Olivia is why raw and not cooked plant-based lifestyle? And then she has something else we've already asked. Well, is the soup cooked that you have? The spinach soup? You have a little bit of cooked or no? Or is that, oh, that's raw too. Okay, I wasn't sure. I mean, for me, it's just anytime I try, try cooked food, it's, I don't feel as good. If I did, I'd eat it probably. If it made me, exactly. nothing makes me feel exactly. this good. And that's why I do it. I have so much energy. I feel my best and feel so good. And when I've cooked food, it's like you, I feel like I need so much water and I, I don't wake up feeling as well rested and it's just a bunch of stuff like that. And my digestion gets halted. So, but yeah, if you want to answer yeah. that question too, that'd be great. People ask me yeah, like, you know, Oh, why a cooked food's bad. Is this bad for you? Why don't you, you know? And it's like, no, I'm not saying cooked foods are bad. I'm not saying any other way of living. It's bad. I'm just saying this is what makes me feel my best. Like I wouldn't do it if it made me feel like shit, you know? And, um, like I've shared, I've gone back to eating cooked foods. I'm not a closed-minded person. I'm I'm a very curious person. You're not you don't go to this type of lifestyle if you're not an open-minded and curious person. So yeah, going back to the cooked foods, I felt a very noticeable negative difference. And that's why I stay on this lifestyle. You know, obviously there's the ethical reasons, obviously, there's so many other aspects to it, but mainly it's because it's what makes me feel my best. And yeah. if, you know, I've heard other people say that going back to cooked foods, they felt better. You know, that's great. If that's works for them, this mm -hmm. is what works for me. Mm -hmm. Me too, hundred percent. And Nadia has a great question coming up. So she said, I would love to know, what did you learn about yourself when you took time off from social media? I did that last year. I forget. I think it was May. And it was the best month I had all year by going off social media. It was incredible. So I don't know how long you, you did it for a whole media. year. You did it for a whole year. No, I said, did you do it for a whole year? No, I did 30 days. I did one month. Oh, 30 days. Okay. Yeah. So I think, cause I think they were asking you this, you, you went off of it, right? Oh, you no. didn't. Oh, so she must've <laughs> just been asking. Oh, she must've just been asking me then. I thought that you went off of it. You've never gone off of it like that. Oh, maybe no, this is your sign like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've definitely seen so many of those stories and I can, it's almost like I can uh, feel the positive effects it would have without even doing it. So like I know doing it would just probably be life changing, um, yeah. but I haven't gotten to the point of trying it yet. No, I, I do uh, thankfully have a very balanced relationship with social media and technology. Good. I think particularly for me, and other people who do struggle with chronic illness and sensual sensitivities, they're very sensitive to radiation, to blue light. That's why I'm wearing these blue light blocking glasses. These aren't prescriptions because I'm very sensitive to screens. So I almost can't spend too much time on technology. Otherwise, I really do feel those effects. So like I, I, check, yeah. Facebook and I check Facebook and Instagram and YouTube once a day. I, I don't let myself do that more than that. 
so yeah, I do feel like I do have a nice balanced approach with it, but I know that going off all social media would be a lovely experience too. Yeah. And don't worry, we won't take up too much more of your time. We got to get you off the screen. Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> but no, it's great. I should get a pair of those blue glasses. My daughter oh, has you them. don't have them? No, but my four-year-old <gasps> has a pair. So if she's on her iPad, oh, she wears them and it's so cute. That's good. No, you, you really should. They 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 are they do make a very big difference yeah to mm-hmm. concentration to your focus and energy especially with the work that you do as well like these sorts of interviews too like yeah, yeah I'm on here cool. all the time yeah good idea well okay I was just gonna ask you something I forget it was so good too hopefully it comes back to me <sighs> but Kimberly said Olivia do you grow your own vegetables and fruit because I've never seen celery that looks so full in my life where did you buy that? And I, I know what she means. I, I can try to put that picture on the screen right now. I've seen you with these big celeries. Do you grow those? Or are you getting them at the <laughs> farmer's market? No, I tried to. Grow, we tried to grow our own here. Wow. And yeah, they just came up really thin, you know, really thin and, and bitter ones. They were super rich green, which shows a lot of nutrients in there. But um, yeah, trying to drink celery juice from like the really dark green bitter celery is very difficult. But no, I, I'm very fortunate where I live. I've got like three, well, two, no, three beautiful local farmer's markets that have the most beautiful organic celery. So I get them from there each week. So I'm, I'm very lucky. Yeah. Amazing. That's good. Great. Yeah. <laughs> and so how, so you feel like you've liked the celery juice thing, the medical medium drinking it in the mornings? Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, uh, as I was just saying, the taste isn't always the best. Like sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish it was cucumber juice that, that he recommended instead of celery juice because I love my cucumber juice. But I know celery juice is very important. It's helped me. It's actually helped eliminate some other symptoms 100% that I was dealing with. I was dealing with acid reflux, 100% gone. I was dealing with tonsil stones, 100% gone. It's helped massively with my digestion. So yeah, there's things like that where it's just helped very quickly that I know that it's doing amazing things for my body. So, and I just like, I just love the feeling of getting such a mineral sodium rich drink in, in the morning. Like I just feel like, yeah, it just mineralizes my body so well. And then, yeah. I'm, and then I'm like ready, ready for like lots of fruit for the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And do you take, I can't remember if you said, do you take DHA EPA or no? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You said you did, right? Okay. I was just curious. I couldn't remember. Okay. And then the, somebody said, please ask her how she handled her allopathic medicine when she shifted to raw, whether she left them at all at once or slowly tapered down. Uh, are they asking if I was on medication? No. How you handled her allopathic medicine when she shifted to raw, whether you just left it all together or slowly tapered them down. I think they mean like, yeah, I don't know. Or we can just skip that one if you're, I don't know. I wasn't taking medication. Yeah, I didn't think you were. Maybe they mean like, yeah, they said medicine too. So, mm. huh. Okay. Well, this has been amazing. I've loved having you on. I, I really wanted to ask something else, but I forget what it was, but it was really good. But oh, well. Oh, I hate when that happens. Oh, me too. It's been bugging me, but oh, well. But if there's anything like, I don't know, I know it must be like we talked about. I'm glad you were so open and shared everything. I have so much respect for that. I just think being real is the Thank best. And people can relate, right? Because I'm sure, because people do reach out to me too and say, you know, I'm constipated and I'm raw. I shouldn't be like I'm a month juicing and I'm bloated. I shouldn't be or like things aren't working when they see these other people sharing stories of it working. So yeah, I think it's important. Yeah. Sorry to cut in there. I just want to say thank you so much for holding this safe space for me to share. Because I think, you know, we do have this like sort of perfect image of like the perfect raw vegans that have healed 100%. And it's just like this perfect journey. But it's, yeah, it's so not like that with me or with other people. And it's nice to be able to just connect with like-minded people like that and just see that the healing journey can be really bumpy for some people. Yeah. But, you know, again, I think as long as you are staying curious and staying open and staying kind and compassionate to yourself and, you know, being experimental with different things, as long as you're doing the best that you can, that's the best that you can do. And that's what I keep telling myself, you know, I'm doing the best that I can, even though I might have people, you know, critics coming and telling me different things, you know, I'm standing strong in what I believe and what I believe makes me feel my best. And yeah, it's, been, it's just been such a self-love journey, kind of like going back to you asking me about giving self-love tips. Like, I think the biggest thing I can say is just continuing to the more that you continue to like nourish your body, your mind and your spirit with 
foods that truly nourish you and activities and your passions and connecting with people that make you feel good. Like it's not an overnight journey to like truly forgive and love yourself. Like it, it happens over time. I think it's probably a lifelong journey. The, but the more you, and it's like it's small things every day and the more that you, you know, implement these daily activities that make you feel good, the more you kind of naturally start to feel like you're worthy of more, you know, mm. and that'll help you to start leaving those toxic relationships and eating better and just living a life that truly makes your soul happy. So, you know, as long as you just continue to nourish mm-hmm. yourself on all those levels, then things will only get better for you. So true. I love it. And I just remembered what I was going to say. I was going to say, <gasps> I know that it must be frustrating, like dealing with the chronic fatigue and the brain fog still, right? But from my experience of my life, when I had a lot of health problems before I went raw and stuff, it turned out to be like the biggest blessing ever because it led to raw. So like, even though you haven't quite like cracked the key, the code yet or figured out like what's going on, I feel like hopefully you will at some point. If not, I mean, you're doing great and you're still like taking so much because it could could be so easy to just give up, right? Because you're experiencing those things. It could be easy to just be like, hey, I'm going to pick up a bottle of wine. I'm going to grab a pizza. Screw it. I'm dealing with brain fog and fatigue. I may as well go to the other side. So I have a lot of respect for you because you're still like so dedicated and positive and taking so much great care of yourself. So the answer will Thank come. Thank you so much. God is Thank here for you. So the much. answer will come and it will be a blessing for some reason that you experience this. There's a reason for it. Yeah, absolutely. And I already try and count my blessings with if I didn't get ill, then I wouldn't have found this lifestyle and I wouldn't be the person that I am today and created the life that I have. So you're right. There's always blessings in everything. So true. Well, so beautiful. Let's end off on that because that's just so amazing. And I love you and thank you for your time coming on and let everybody know where they can find you. And I will link it all down below so you guys can all go follow Olivia. She's amazing. And yeah. Thank you so much. Um, And I love you too. You're wonderful. So yeah, you can find me Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. My username is all the same. It's just Olivia Budgen, my full name. Amazing. And I'll link it down below. And you guys, the viewers, my amazing viewers, I love you guys. And I hope you love this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up right now. And be sure to subscribe for more great, real, raw content just like this one. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye, everyone.